When it comes to student misbehavior, many schools across the country have zero tolerance policies, which often lead to suspensions. These policies disproportionately affect students of color. But now, some school districts, including those in San Francisco, Denver, and New York City, have turned away from zero tolerance and replaced it with what is known as restorative justice. In these programs, students are encouraged to resolve conflict by talking about the root causes of their behavior. NewsHour Weekend visited a New York high school campus taking part in a four-year-long study of restorative justice practices. Megan Thompson has the story. Let's do a quick check-in, just give me a one word about like how your week has been. Um, in a ninth grade civics class in Brooklyn, New York, Erica cool. Wright is encouraging students to talk to each other and build trust. It's a little bit overwhelming. It's part of a new program known as restorative justice. All the kids have been asking for trips, trips, trips. A team from the nonprofit Center for Court Innovation works at the high schools on Canarsie Educational Campus, where the majority of the students qualify for free or reduced price lunch. The campus is in an area that has traditionally had one of the highest suspension rates in the city. Our students have incredibly adult-sized problems, but don't always have adult-sized resources. Mishkaya Setut is a restorative justice coordinator. What restorative justice allows us to do is to look beyond the behavior and look at some of the root causes and see how can we prevent this from turning into something much bigger. So now if a student gets into a fight, the question isn't how bad was the fight and how many days is that suspension worth? The question is, well, what do we do to make sure that you don't have another fight? The last time that we met, you guys had a conflict with each other. Just into its first year, the project is part of a citywide effort to reduce suspensions and increase safety. So just what's been going on? How was your week? This is called a harm circle, where Erica Wright mediates conflicts between students. My week has been kind of calm. Passing a baton known as the talking piece, junior Tony Deary and freshman Shane Dover are discussing what happened after school one day in February. Was, I was walking on Rockway Parkway. And he had came, he hit me, and we got into the altercation. I um, came up to him and tried to discuss with him, but I didn't take it the way I was supposed to. I actually put matters in my own hands, and then I ended up fighting him. We have the time to where we can actually facilitate a real conversation, and it's not like, okay, we just don't want you guys to fight, but it's like, what was the root of the fight? How have you guys been since that time? The way I handle my stuff is usually I handle it with violence, but ever since I've encountered the mediation circle, I've learned how to control my anger and like just talk about it. Like, because talking doesn't hurt. It's better to use your words than to use violence. The circle helped the students realize the root cause of the conflict was simply a misunderstanding. We really had like a lot of similarities. We had like we both played football. Like the same football players. Ever since it's been resolved, like, I've been seeing Shane around. I've been treating him like he like one of my bros, like I know him in my life. We hang out sometimes in the park, and uh, if the conflict wasn't resolved, then I think it would still be an ongoing problem. Change doesn't happen overnight. Candace Fagan is a dean at Urban Action Academy, the Canarsie campus school that Shane Dover attends. She's noticed a measurable difference, not only with him, but with many of her students since the program started this school year. I see a lot more respect in the building. It's just not a feeling. I see the levels of respect that students have for one another. Think about like your best friend and what is one trait that they possess that you value the most about them? Ninth graders in this civics class are discussing qualities they value most in relationships. Because you can cry and you can laugh with your best friend. With that happening in the classroom, it's less likely for you to fight somebody that you now build a relationship with and authentic relationships, not just, you know, hey, how you doing? My name is, my favorite color is blue. We go in depth, we go in with feelings and how do we handle conflict and anger. And Fagan says the program has contributed to a significant drop in the number of suspensions at Urban Action Academy. Last year this time, we were at 158 suspensions this year, we're at 37. Now, although, you know, we did have 37 incidences this year, how do we repair the harm that's done? How do we let both students know that they're valuable assets to the community? And we want to bring them back into the community so that they can continue to be successful academically. Multiple academic studies have found that suspensions make it more likely that students will drop out of high school.
The trend particularly affects students of color. The U.S. Department of Education has found that nationwide, black students are three times more likely to be suspended than white students. And a 2011 study of nearly one million students in Texas found that those students who were suspended or expelled were nearly three times more likely to come into contact with the juvenile justice system within the next year. Coordinator Mishkael Setut argues that the restorative justice model can help prevent kids from ending up in prison down the road, not just in his school, but across the nation. We have the largest incarcerated population in the world, and that is not going to change unless we start doing things differently. I think restorative justice is needed everywhere. Um, but specifically at Canarsie, you cannot necessarily provide everything that a kid needs. But what restorative justice does is it gives you the option of not doing more harm. In December, Setut helped mediate a circle with Jacob Merritt, a senior who fought with and injured another student two years ago when he was a sophomore. She used to make fun of my hair, she used to call me names, and usually I would deal with it, but it was one day. Um, I couldn't really put up with it anymore. I, I was fed up. Merritt and the other student fought, and she ended up going to the hospital. Police officers came to the school and arrested Merritt. I was nervous. I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I didn't know if I was going to spend the night in in the precinct. I'd never been in that situation before, so it was just it was scary for me. But ultimately, the other student, who did not agree to our interview request, dropped the charges. Administrators suspended Merritt for a week. This all occurred before the school had started harm circles. The tension between the two students bubbled up again on a school trip last year. So she had got upset. Merritt's girlfriend, Harmony Colazzo, had a verbal confrontation with the other student. So we ended up getting separated on the bus. Then Colazzo, Merritt, and the student agreed to talk in a circle with Mishkael Setut. It provided a, a safe environment for me to talk to her and her to talk to me without there being, you know, a big argument. You know, I was able to put my side of the story, which she wasn't able to hear. Jacob Merritt also had a chance to apologize. They get arrested and suspended, but they actually never get to say, I'm sorry. And so for Jacob, he got that opportunity. And for the other young lady, that's what she really wanted to hear. I always felt like any day she could say something or I would say something and, you know, a bomb would go off. But since since the mediation, I felt like things have been, you know, diffused. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye, Simon.